Right, welcome to my bathroom. So it's all very glamorous. There's Betty hanging out ready for her bath. Um, oh, half of the water has gone. <laughs> Let's put some more in. Okay, so it's just, um, thanks to the wonders of feel -a vision you can tell it's just kind of more than tepid, but you know, I can put my hand in there and I'm not screeching, so that's good. Um, just ordinary plain old water. And what I am going to put in is some of this stuff. Now this is by Euclid, um, and it is a no rinse, delicate wash. Um, I use this on all of my wool stuff that I uh, block, and I do block everything. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in. I can't really see through camera. That's probably far too much. Give that a switch. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, like this specialist thing here. You can get no rinse wool wash um, in the supermarkets. Um, really what we're wanting to do is not have to touch Betty too much because, away Betty, away and soak, because she's pure wool, um, if we do, uh, the more we kind of agitate, the more likely she is to felt. Now felting is gorgeous and wonderful, but Betty would reduce in size quite dramatically. And my noggin is already struggling, quite honestly, to fit into her. So that's another thing I wanted to say to you. If you find, after blocking, and I would I would suggest after blocking is probably your best bet because there will be some stretch in it. If you find you can't get it on, you can always take back a couple of rows of the, you know the um, um, coral rows that you did to finish off. Let me turn Betty over. These bits here, you can always take those back post blocking and take a few, uh, maybe take a round out so that there's less you know, it's a little bit larger. That's It's perfectly adjustable in that way. If you don't want to wait till after blocking, you can do it before, but just be aware that there will be a little bit of stretch. Um, also, I do have an un unusually large head. <laughs> so anyway, it's all very personal, isn't it? I think it's because I'm in my bathroom with you, I feel able to tell you these things. Right, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to swish, wash, bash on a rock or do anything. I'm just going to leave Betty to have a relaxing soak for at least one hour. Um, to let all those fibres relax and bloom and be gorgeous. So we'll come back to her after she's had a good old relax. Right, so Betty has had a lovely long soak for an hour. I should have popped some candles on for her, but I didn't. Um, so we're going to drain the water. And what I tend to do is I like to, I just kind of pull the plug and let the water drain. And that will kind of... Uh, pull some of the water through okay now this is the vital part the gentle handling um, I'm just gonna sort of fold and do a really sort of gentle press and you can see the water coming out it doesn't want to be any more aggressive than that with pure wool because as I said to you I do not want to felt this is still a little bit coming out it doesn't matter um, if you could, I mean, it's really heavy. I can feel that it's really heavy. Just giving it a really gentle squeeze. Obviously, normally I would do this with two hands, but I'm filming with the other. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to transfer her to a towel and do a little bit more squeezing of water. Right. Okay. I'm very sorry about the cla clashing pink, but there you go. I gave a tiny squeeze with two hands before I moved over onto the towel, and I'm just sort of patting her. Her, passing the beret onto the towel and what I'm going to do if you can see I'm going to lift the towel up it's really tricky with one hand and I apologize but we are filming on location here people and this is sort of BBC the BBC um, wildlife crews get this kind of problem all the time so what I'm doing you can see is I'm just patting the sort of squeezing the towel and when I feel now I mean it's obviously still very wet but it's a whole heap drier than it was because I've squozen, that's a real word, a lot of the uh, water out onto the towel. Now, when I back up here a bit, you can see that she's awfully misshapen. So the next stage is gonna take care of that altogether. Let's move on. Right, 
I've got a dinner plate here and I borrowed that from my neighbour because I didn't have one that was the right size. Let's talk about the size that you need. If I put Betty on the plate like that, I know that she's not all in the right shape yet, but don't worry. You can see a bit of the plate all the way around the, the edge and that's fine because what I want to do is I just want to kind of give a little stretch to the work because it's going to even out the lumps and bumps and do, if I sort of tilt her like that, going to even out the lumps and bumps and smooth everything out and make it look fantastic. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to turn the plate over and put the beret onto it that way because the plate's got a slight curvature and I'm exaggerating here but it's got a slight curvature which is just going to give a slight shaping to the beret. So what I'm going to do and it is going to be a squeeze, do not panic, I am going to ease the beret over the plate. I'm trying to keep it in camera shot. It is a stretch, don't be afraid, don't be afraid, it won't break um, but it, you are going to have to really encourage that beret onto the plate if you've got the right size. If it goes on there too, oh, giving a real pull, if it goes on there too easily, you might want to go up a size or two of plate um, because you do want to give it a little bit of a, of a stretch to really shape it. And I am struggling like mad here. There we go. Okay, now obviously if I leave it like that, it's gonna dry in completely the wrong shape. So you're gonna have a bit of a manipulation to move it into the right kind of position. So if I go like so, it's roughly even, isn't it? You can see, and if I turn over, and sort of smooth. The thing with blocking is that you can mold and smooth the work. So molding and smoothing the work um, into the right kind of shape. And however you leave it, you must leave it. That's the key words. Um, it will dry. So if I have this completely off centered, it's going to dry off centered and, re and retain the shape. Um, off centered. Now, in our pattern, um, Susan, completely forgot her name, how rude. Susan has run some stitches, some big stitches across the center uh, of the beret to pull it really taut on the top. I don't feel I need to do that on this plate because I feel that the stretch that I've got there already is sufficient. Um, you can sort of see it stretched, stretched that top out nicely. If I hold it like that, that little bob, that kind of bulge is totally gone. And I'm just going to smooth it down. So I don't feel the need to stretch it further. If you think yours needs further stretching, do what Susan has done in the pattern, which is, as I said, thread up some of the leftover yarn and work through just to pull these edges taut and put which will obviously in turn pull the top part taut you can see enough plate coming through mine that it's quite stretched enough so that is all I need to do um, and what I need to do now is the worst and hardest part for me because I've got to leave it alone leave it alone until it's dry sometime later folks it's dry definitely dry um, and I actually had to turn it over because the moisture had all collected in the underneath. So while it's drying, do just make sure, see so if you need to change the position um, of it at all. I just kept mine in the airing cupboard. So it's been about 24, maybe a little bit over 24 hours now. So I'm gonna take the beret off, <sighs> using a bit of brute force, probably off camera. You can see it'll take a bit of beating, but <laughs> try to be gentle and um plate may be discarded and there we go flat as a beautiful beret pancake <laughs> now obviously you can't feel this um but it has absolutely flattened and evened my workout you can see it's pristine and beautiful it's so forgiving if you're a little bit like me and 
not so neat some people are tremendously neat with their work and I'm not that person so blocking utterly utterly beautiful now then what next so on our um photographs there is a pom-pom which turns betty into more of a tam shanta i think so i don't want to add a pom-pom to mine also pom-poms are super greedy on yarn and i've got quite a lot left there i could make another i could alternate my colorway but i'm thinking of maybe knocking up because I'm not nice and I don't gift. <laughs> I'm wondering about whether I can do some cuffs or something to match. But if you do want to do a pom-pom, please go ahead and do so. Um, but I think I shall love you and leave you here and say Betty is complete. Thanks for staying with us and um, hope you enjoy this make.